Good morning. <laughs> All slowly getting awake from yesterday, or? So welcome to my presentation about uh, making your extensions more powerful by implementing Joomla ACL. Who's an extension developer in this room? One, two, okay, so most of you. Who already implemented ACL? That's less, so great. And who knows how ACL works in Joomla? So, I'm Sander Potcher, I'm uh, from the Netherlands, I live in uh, Weesp. It's a nice uh, city next to Amsterdam. And for those who uh, know me already a bit longer, I'm the developer of ACL Manager. I have a Joomla agency back in the Netherlands uh, called Perfect Web Team, and I love Joomla. Um, my slides will be published on slideshare.net slash my first name, last name. So you're welcome to write anything down, but you can find them over there as well. For those who know me also a bit longer, know that there are some Stroopwafel thing. Uh, Joomla Stroopwafels, uh, and they became a bit popular uh, all around the Joomla community. So I always have to travel with a pack bag of Stroopwafels. This year I didn't brought any Joomla Stroopwafels, but I have, do have others. So if you would like to try or <laughs> have something to eat during my presentation, feel free to take one or two or more. So, Joomla ACL. Welcome. Uh, where actually ACL stands for? It stands for Access Control List. And in Joomla, we basically have two parts of the Joomla ACL. Can I see hands who just have been to the presentation by Randy? That's one, okay. So I will get into some basics to all give you on the same line about Joomla ACL. So we have the visibility of content which is applied for uh, articles, categories, menu item, modules. So that basically means what is visible on the website. And the other part is the actions on objects. And that can be anything, like categories, uh, articles, components. Uh, so that means what a user can do by creating new content, editing or deleting anything. So let's get to a couple basics first. The ACL system. Let's get an overview of how it works. So we have the user, we have permissions, and those permissions in default, we have 10 actions in Joomla. It's <coughs> site login, admin login, offline access, so there are basically the login actions. We have the super admin in configure, th which is basically the same. Um, we have the access administration interface, and we have create, delete, edit, edit state, and edit own. Does everybody know what edit states mean? That's most of the times the difficult one. So that means if you can unpublish, publish something, feature, unfeature. So those are the states. In the center of the whole ACL system in Joomla, we have the groups. And as last item, we have the access level, so the visibility of content. So let's have a quick look at the relations between those items. A user is always assigned to one or more user groups. That's totally up to you. You can have one or 20, depends on the need. The same applies for permissions. You assign the permissions to groups as well. Access level are also assigned, not really assigned to groups, but you create an access level where you say, okay, this group is part of this, this group, so that's not related to members. One thing to keep in mind always is that it's not possible to assign permissions directly to a user. You always have the group in the middle. So even when you are planning to set up permissions for a one user only, you still have to create a group, assign the permissions to that group and the user. So it might also be good to think in this way instead of groups about roles. So a group, let's forget maybe that term, is basically a role that someone can perform on a website. In that way, it makes also more sense that you assign a user of your website to certain roles they can perform on the website. Another important thing to keep in mind is that there are some kind of levels in Joomla. And I generally talk about four levels. On top, we have the global configurations, where you can configure the permissions for the entire website. 
a level below that, we have the component permissions. So each component has their own set of permissions which you can configure. And depending on the component, you might have, for example, for the article manager, you have the category permissions. Uh, for the module manager, you can set the permissions per module. And also depending on the component, you might be able to set for even a lower level, the article, in, in case of the article manager. Joomla has a lot of inheritance. That means that once you set something for the parent level, it will inherit it down to all the way to the bottom. So to get this clear, I have some quick examples. In base, everything is not set. And not set means not allowed. So as long as you do not allow a certain action in Joomla, and this can be anything like create or edit, um, a group will not be able to perform that action. So you really, in case, let's, let's keep in mind, we're talking about the create action in this case. So on the global configuration, the create action is set to not set. So it's not allowed. And that's been inherited down the website. So this user group is not able to create anything within a website. If we will change it for the global configuration to allowed, it will mean that this user group is able to create anything in the website, anywhere. Because it's set on a global configuration, all components inherit this permission and uh, maybe the, the categories and articles in there as well. So what happens if you deny something for a lower level? So you set create for uh, the global configuration, but you want a specific category not to be editable or that the user can create articles in there. In that case, you can, for a specific category, set it to deny. Another thing is when you don't want the user to be able to create content in your entire website, you can also leave the global configuration to not set, but only allow it for a specific component. So this can be the article manager, and then you only allow the create action for the article manager. So this user group will only be able to create articles uh, in the website and no web links, banners, or whatever extension you have installed. You can even do that for a lower level. So leave it not set, that means it's not allowed and just for one specific category or one module. Another important thing is that denied in Joomla will always win. So if you set denied for the create action, it will be inherited down. But even when you try to allow something for a specific component, it will not work and will result in a conflict. Denied will always win. So it's always good to try to avoid the denied action as much as possible. Because it makes no sense to set it to denied on a global configuration if you can leave it to not set, which also means denied. But in that case, you are able to allow something and deny it later on. So this is something really important to keep in mind, try to avoid it, avoid it. And in most cases, it's really not needed to use the denied action at all. That was one way of inheritance in Joomla between the levels. To make it even a bit more complex, uh, Joomla decided to add another inheritance. And that's between groups. So if you would set a loud action to, uh, for the create action to allow for the manager, the nested administrator group will also be able to uh, create. To keep it simple, and only think of the inheritance between the levels, I suggest to not use nested groups if necessary. These groups are here for the backwards compatibility with Joomla 1.5. But since 2.5 and 3, wherever new version, you can really customize your user groups. This also means that you can remove them. So remove them, keep it simple, keep it flat. So when you check permissions, you know when it is inherited allowed that it comes from a parent level rather than maybe a combination of a parent level and a user group, which makes it complex to understand. So ACL, um, I asked in the beginning already, we already implemented ACL on their extensions and that were not that many people, some, great job on that, uh, but others did not yet. And there might be several reasons for it. Sometimes I heard, why bother about that ACL thing? It's too complex, so I don't implement it for my users. So. My question is, why not? 
In the end, it's not too complicated. And it's very important for many of your end users, of your extensions, because it allows to build websites that are really set for uh, usability. So people can go to the backend and only access the things they need. I mean, when you need a ticket and you have all those signs, it makes you confused rather than maybe simply a button, get me a ticket. The same applies for Joomla. You, it's now able, with all those permissions in ACL and Joomla, to provide backend access to just one component. And that's much easier for people than they log in to Joomla and see all those menus. We as developers and as site builders or Joomla experts know exactly what everything means, but your end users not. So don't make those users think. This is a good example in the Netherlands, and Peter knows it maybe, we have uh, uh, milk, and normally those are in uh, cartons without any possibility to look in. Uh, so if you want to know how much you left, it's maybe you can put it on a, a lift or whatever, but a simple solution was to make it transparent, a part of it, so you can directly see how much is in there. So don't make people think. There's a great term of Steve Crook as well. Uh, I really suggest to look, read that book so you understand the importance also of implementing ACL. Another item, uh, I have my extension and providing support and maybe 90% of all my support tickets is about specific requests for extensions to implement ACL. Um, so a good reason is to save myself some time. So if you implement it, thank you. Uh, for example, this is the request I received over the years for Zoo. And another one for FutureMart, which is even uh, slightly longer. So people are really looking for it. And I'm welcome if you have an extension to look in my ticket system to see how many requests you uh, received so far. But please start implementing the default Joomla ACL system. And it's really easy. Basic ACL implementation. It's really like Duplo. What can you achieve with the basic ACL implementation? That should be in any extension at least. In that, you can provide backend access and should only allow access to one specific component. So think of this when uh, someone is trying to build a website with ACL manager and is trying to get uh, backend access allowed for just ACL manager. If that user of Joomla has other uh, components installed, which does not support the Joomla ACL system, it will show up in that list. And I can't prevent that. So that's really annoying. So it's not working if one of the part of the extension does have ACL implement and the other part of it not. So to achieve this, two actions are required. It's configure and it's access administrator interface, which basically means is it visible in the backend, yes or not. And to be able to set this action, we need that action. So that's why these two actions should be a minimum in any component. And this only requires four steps, 18 lines of code, and a couple minutes. So I will show it over here. The first step is add those actions. So most of the components, as you've been developing, do have a configuration.xml file where all options of the component are listed. What you need to add in, oh, sorry, uh, need to add is this field set, which is called permissions. And you can simply copy and paste this and the only thing you need to change is the component name. That's all. So change that into your component and then this step is fi fin finalized. The next step is to do the actual access check. So when somebody tried to access your component in the backend, maybe directly by typing the URL, you want to prevent that somebody is able to go into your component. So an easy one. Directly at the beginning of see if they are able are, are allowed for the core manage action, so access the administrator interface for this extension. If they are not allowed to access this, prevent it and show an error, a default Joomla error. Just a couple lines, easy one, I think. The third step is to add the actual option button. 
maybe you already have that in your extension, but the people should be able to click on the options to configure the permissions. That's also an easy one. Uh, check if somebody is able to configure the component because the option button should only be visible for the groups that are able to configure the component. Change it again into your extension component name and show the helper button for your And then the option button will become visible for ones that are allowed for the administration, for the configuration. The last step, and that's probably the most difficult one, is add a language string. That's just one line. So full bar options, so the button is displayed nicely in your component. These are the steps that are only needed to implement at least the basic support for ACL. That's not too complicated, right? So in my personal opinion, and you can agree or don't agree, but I hope you agree, um, basic ACL support is not optional. It is an, a requirement for any Joomla component out there. There are basically no excuses. In the time you've been in this session, you could have implemented already. So I can understand what about some more advanced ACL implementation. Because that's interesting as well. Um, you can think of a lot of ideas to implement uh, in your extension. For example, when you would have a, a, a form component where people can create forms, wouldn't it be nice if, you, if your users of your component can provide backend access to your website, show just your component that is providing the forms, and for example, only allow access to view the submitted forms. So not be able to configure the forms, but just view the submissions. Another example, when you have an e-commerce extension, uh, allow access, and that's something you saw with FutureMarkt, is asked quite a lot, provide backend access and only show the orders. So prevent users from disabling your great setup of the web sh shop, just show the orders, because they need to process them without seeing all those other options. If there's time left, we can discuss what areas you have in your component, and I'm happy to come up with suggestions from based what I've seen in uh, supporting people in this. So to understand a bit of the underlying things in implementing some more AC, uh, advanced ACL, I want to look into a couple things. First of them is the database. All permissions are stored in the Joomla assets table. One table, and that's uh, a list of the ID of the asset, uh, some nested structure is in there, so that's basically the levels I'm talking about earlier, uh, the, the nested set, live write. Um, if you don't understand that, I'm happy to get into that during the coffee break. Name of the asset, the title, which is basically the same, for example, if you have an article, um, the, the title of an article is also the title of the asset, and we have the rules. And the rules are probably the most interesting. Those are JSON encoded uh, settings of an action. And in this case, this is the action, core login.site. The first number is uh, for a group. So this is user group with ID six. And we allow uh, the core login site action for this user group. And the same is for user group with ID two. So that's a kind of how those permissions are stored something you have to take care of. Joomla does that for you. Another thing is the naming format of the name column in the assets table. So, for example, we have the com content component over here. We're talking about an article, so not the category, but an article. And those numbers are in line with the article ID. So it's not the asset ID, it's the article ID. So if you would look up for article with ID 24, you will find it. So extension, the section, I will get into that a bit later, and the object ID. If you have a component, for example, with orders, um, or for example, I implemented the module ACL support in Joomla. It was first only possible to set for the entire module manager, but now it's possible to do that per module. To allow that change in Joomla, there was one change needed. I had to change the uh, module uh, table and add one column, which is the asset ID. 
that is in line with the ID in SSable of that specific module. So that's only needed and you can implement that in your extension that way as well. The other area is the J table. So the J table basically takes care of getting the right names uh, and IDs uh, and the parent things. So if you store something in the database, that the right asset ID is uh, created or updated. So, for example, it uh, first gets the rules of the forms. That's also something that you don't have to take care of as long as you use the JAMESform system. Then it needs to create the asset name. In this case, it will be, for example, comfubar and the section and then the ID of the item. And the thing that's needed is the parent asset ID. So the section is the first level below the component. So I need to get the ID of comfubar. So the component asset. There are plenty of examples when you look into Joomla of these kind of naming conventions for several components. So you can use them as well. The next thing is the access.xml file. I said earlier that you can set the permissions in the configuration file, but if you have a lot of permissions, you can also refer to a different file. So when you have your configuration, you can add a field set, and in that case, it will load uh, the access.xml file, which is in, a, in the root of your component in the backend. And in this access file, you define all permissions. In this example is from comcontent. And let's have a bit closer look for the ones in the back. Um, the first part is that you define where this file is about. In this case, comcontent. Then we have several sections in that uh, component. Um, each component should at least the component section because that's a minimum for the component because those are the settings for the component itself. In case of Joomla, uh, article manager, we have two others as well. The category one for all of the categories and the article ones. So we have the component permissions, we have the category permissions and the article permissions. And when we look at those actions, we see a list of all the available actions for that specific component. And within the component section, all actions that are also listed in the nested section sh should be included. Or create will not be in the component options, but in the category. You can't s allow the create action component-wide. So the component should have all available <coughs> actions listed there. Just a quick look. We have a couple of those naming conventions which are in line with the available action in the backend in the interface. So you can see that the create action of, or the edit action of an article is also in a category. So you can allow editing of all articles, but in that case, then you can also deny something. And it's also over back in the component area. If we look quickly back at those levels, those are in line with this. So when you would allow the edit for the component, it is inherited down to the category, to the article. Add those exit files in the same way. And then when you have that access.xml file linked in your configuration XML, it will show up as a new tab almost uh, of directly when you change the uh, permissions. Then you get the default list. So what if you have custom actions? That's also possible. For example, we have here, we have a keeper backup, which is using the two required actions. But, uh, Nicholas added two, uh, three other ones actually. Uh, backup now, configure, which is maybe not that good idea is there are not two configures, <laughs> and the download one. But you can imagine that you that with Akiba, you can now allow people to access Akiba backup and only download backup files. So you can think in those ways of creating your setup. So how does that look like in Akiba's ic um, uh, access XML file? He has the component com Akiba, the section component, Within this section, he has all actions listed and three of his additional actions. 
And as you can see, oh, sorry, he's using his own naming format in a proper way. So if you add your own actions, you should always start with the name of your extension and the action. This one is a kind of default for so your component name without the com underscore. So Sobi Pro or GM to win or DB8 locator. The actual name of your action is totally up to you, but try to keep that understandable as well. It's also important to keep this structured. I mean, it sounds great to add many of those actions, but if people start to configure extensions and they get a list of like this, which is even longer, I don't think they even will touch it and start configuring ACL for this component. And if we look carefully at this file, they created actions for each specific area as well. What I would suggest for this component is they, that they start using sections as well. So a section for the category, uh, a section for the types, because we now see create type, but also create category. So it's better to have just the create action component wide, have a section for the types where you can set if someone is able to create types and a section for the categories like Joomla does. So try to keep as less actions as possible to achieve the most. It's a bit of a challenge, but start thinking of it before implementing, write down the possibilities and really use those sections. So by the component, it's easy to get the interface in a tab because that started to as soon as you add it to the configuration file. But what, for example, if you want to add the, the interface to in Joomla, the module specific where you can configure it? easy one. So we want this type of interface in or component. All is needed is checking and this user group, so user assigned to this group, configure this component because we only want to show the permissions if they are really managing configuring the website. Then uh, create a new bootstrap tab with your own able to define title of it Echo the form with the rules, uh, end the bootstrap tab, and end the it. That's all needed to get that interface listed. Joomla does that for you. Another thing uh, I also recently uh, improved in Joomla is the get actions helper. In the past, a lot of actions, uh, each component had their own helper file to retrieve the settings of a specific action in Joomla. We now change it in something more general. So it's in the library. And it's in the file libraries scheme as helper content.php. And this function gets all actions for a component or even for a category within a component. So you can use this in your component. So how do you call this function? It's pretty, pretty easy. You use the helper content, get actions, your component name, and it will return all available actions and the settings for that user group <coughs> back into your component. If you have something like a section, you do it a bit different. The component name, the name of your section, so this can be in a module manager, it will be module, and the ID of the object. So not the asset ID, but the ID, for example, of the module. In that way, we can use that, for example, display the toolbar. That's quite often the way uh, the actions are available. Are we going to show the create button, the edit button, or are we not showing anything because they don't have access? So in that way, we're relying on the helper. Yeah, it's something. Same for edit, same for delete, and same for Not a default Joomla action. You can do exactly the same way, as long as you keep with the naming format. You can, oh, sorry, you can really use this can do anywhere. This example is for the toolbar. 
but you can use also use it in your view or in your mod model. So you can really use it anywhere within your component to filter information. You can also use, for example, if people filter on an overview of all the items, you can use the ID of the filter. So you, the toolbar changes depending on the filter what you select. This is also being used in the Joomla core for the article manager, for example. Um, I've created a list of several resources with really copy-paste ready code and some great uh, resources to start implementing. Uh, the first one is uh, a blog I wrote back in 2011 on my website when Joomla 1.7 was just released, which explaining the motivation to really start supporting Joomla ACL. The second one explains the, the really 12 lines of code in four steps to implement at least the basics in your component. You can do that this weekend. The third one is a great tutorial uh, which is about developing your own component for Joomla. Uh, and there is also one chapter of that entire tutorial about adding ACL. Another one on the documentation website is specifically uh, targeted for about ACL, which also explain again how to use sections as well. Um, some general tutorial about how that whole ACL system works. Another one that might be interesting, that's not really a tutorial, but I, uh, I s uh, told before that uh, I contributed the module ACL to Joomla. And it might be interesting to look what was needed to change a component with component-wide permissions to something with permissions per module. So you can look at the file changes I've made at that time in Joomla to achieve it. Uh, the same applies for the get action improvements, so you can see where in Joomla that is being called and on what way because you will see all different implementations of retrieving the actions, so you can find great examples of this. And again, the presentation will be on slideshare.net uh, slash Sandra So this was basically what I uh, was planning to present. I'm not sure how long I we do have left. Uh, nine minutes. Nine minutes, huh? Um, so there's quick time for questions. I would prefer not specifically ACL questions, but it might be nice if somebody is thinking, I have an extension, can you suggest what type of access people are looking for to get an impression of what the customers are looking for? Thomas? Uh, yes, um, unfortunately, as far as I know, uh, plugins are not very uh, uh, supported by the ACL. Um, and when I have a component that is extendable with plugins, uh, it's easy for me to add this into the, the ACL configuration and, and so on, because it's not dynamic. And Um, I have two ideas, one long-term solution and one quick win. Um, a plugin is often supporting a component in the end. So within a plugin, you can also retrieve the actions of a component. So that will be a kind of quick solution where you... But then the plugin adds new actions, that's the problem. Yeah, so for that, uh, in the end, the long-term solution is like for the module manager, at the moment, the uh, plugin manager only is able to configure permissions for all plugins and not specifically per plugin. So next step what will be if we start implementing ACL in the same way we did now for the module ACL, so you can configure permissions per plugin. So in that way you can add your own additional uh, actions for a plugin. Uh, and that's also high on my list on things I'm willing to contribute to Joomla on the ACL part. Uh, as I think that it's in line with the module ACL, the plugins, but also another interesting one I see often is for the menu. At the moment, you're only able to configure the permissions for the entire menu manager, but not for a specific menu or even a menu item. Peter. Do you create best tools in that sense? 
Yeah, so what, what I'm basically always do when I set up a new website with ACL is that I have my administrator account, but then in a different browser, I'm opening uh, an, uh, the website as well, and I create a test group with a test user, and I start to log in with that. And I log in um, when no actions are set. So I basically see nothing in the back end. And then I start configuring, allowing certain actions, and check directly in the other browser what the result is. And by using two browsers, you can easily use one uh, for your account and the other one for the result, which doesn't conflict with the sessions of Joomla. Okay. And sometimes you have to log out and log in again with certain actions. Yeah. And that's basically only needed when you change the access level settings. So if you change an access level, for example, if you change content for, from public to registered, it's only visible if a user session is ended and started again, as that information is stored in the Joomla session. But for the uh, normal component actions that you define in your components, it's not needed to log out and log in. So you can directly test that without logging in, logging out all the time. Okay. So just refresh of the page. Yeah, so uh, it's a good question. So what is about the performance about ACL? Um, as you can see with the helper call, it's a great idea to make sure you do that, retrieve all actions just once. And that's been changing in the Joomla core because in the past we were checking each of those actions uh, time by time. So each time there was a call to the assets table uh, and by using the, the helper file, um, this way, you retrieve all actions and simply reuse that. But you can also uh, call it very early in your component already and use that in your views, uh, for the toolbar rendering, for anywhere. In that way, uh, it doesn't have any performance impact because you just do the call once. And it really doesn't matter how many actions you have. I mean, thousands will be maybe not that useful anyway. But um, so it's always good to try to prevent as much of those single checks on actions, but try to do get all actions once and reuse that across your component. Peter? Yeah, and, and that's basically related uh, most often to hosting settings for the, uh, the maximum input variables. So uh, a lot of hosts have that limited to 1,000 input fields for a form, and when you have 3,000 user groups where all with all those dropdowns, those are all basically input fields yeah. in Joomla. So because of the 3,000 groups, you hit that limitation of the web host, and the Joomla probably wasn't reacting on any uh, click on the buttons anymore. You can solve that by uh, contacting your web host or increase it <coughs> by Haiti Access uh, or uh, PHP INI or it's quite often a setting in your hosting configuration panel as well. So you can increase that to a high number, which is also not really negative. It's kind of default setting of hosting 2000. Uh, what's the uh, max undersc underscore input underscore farce. Okay, that's, yeah, that's a great, okay, yeah. Sorry, is it a? No, it's also not really a limitation in PHP. Uh, PHP. Yeah, it's, it, in the past it's been used for security reasons, but Basically, there are really not really that much security issues when you increase that to 10,000, 10, for example. So 
it's when you contact your host, they will easily change that for you. I, I for myself, I can with my hosting company, I can configure it myself. So they will not allow me that if it was a real security issue. <laughs> so, thanks for uh, being at the presentation. I uh, I will be around for the rest of the weekend. If you want to share these, or if you want me to think with you about how you can implement ACL, I'm willing to. So. Find me and let's have a chat and enjoy the rest of Jane Beyond.